Well, I'm joined now by Sigrid Carlson, who is Associate Professor at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York. Hello to you. Hello. So we're talking about at what point PSA testing should start for prostate cancer. Now, it's controversial. Why is that? I would say it's multifactorial. Um, I think it depends on how the guideline groups interpret the evidence um, about the pros and cons about screening. Uh, I also think um, it's controversial because uh, there's both benefits and harms and some people think there are more benefits, some people think there are more harms and so there is controversy when to start and when to, when to stop. So just talk me through the benefits and the harms yes. very quickly. So the benefits is that PSA screening does save lives. It reduces uh, uh, morbidity and mortality from prostate cancer, but there's also the harms, which is overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Okay, and so why is it so hard to reach a consensus, do you think, within the urological community of when to screen? There are many ways that you can screen and uh, it's hard to reach a consensus on that uh, schema or on the, the approach on how to screen. But I think among, amongst the people who have studied this, there's actually a strong consensus uh, that you should obtain a baseline PSA screening in your mid 40s to early 50s and then stop depending on life expectancy in your uh, early 70s, mid, mid 70s. So tell me about your study. You looked at people between the ages of 50 and 70, yes. So this, was a, this is a study that we are presenting here at this conference at the EAU in London um, from the Göteborg trial. And that study screened men every two years, starting between the ages of 50 to 65 up to the age of 70. And our study shows that starting sooner reduces mortality more. So if you should have a population-based screening program, you should start no later than at age 55. But then I suppose you get into treating those people and then you get into over-treating those people. Yes, correct. So it's also not only what you to have the test but also what you do about the test so uh, embracing active surveillance for low-risk tumors is an important concept uh, in, 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 in screening and treatments so that you can avoid the side effects. And how would you like this debate to move forward? What do you think is the next step? The next step I would say is a conversation between stakeholders about how to interpret the evidence and not just uh, only re rely on randomized trials but to also embrace observational studies and modeling studies so that we can come to a smart approach to, to screening, to engage in shared decision making and to um, uh, not, not over screen older men, to um, be more, uh, have a more smart approach before biopsy so that uh, you also take into account reflex tests before jumping to biopsy and then again embracing active surveillance and not over treating low risk disease because if you follow these simple guidelines you can um, dramatically improve the ratio between harms and benefits. All right, well Professor Carlson, thank you very much. Thank you.